Now, all of these generic parameters are showing up on the title page of the datasheet for that operational amplifier and all kind of other operational amplifier data sheets would look very, very similar. First of all, we have a specification of what the supply voltage range of that amplifier is. In that case, it can operate from plus minus 5 volt to plus minus an 18 volt. Then we have a noise figure, how much noise we have per square root hertz in the spectrum of the output of the amplifier. The parasitic offset voltage at the input and just one out of the many numbers that represent the total harmonic distortion of an amplifier. The slew rate is rounded to 7 volts per microseconds and the gain bandwidth product is given as the gain which is unitless and the bandwidth is in hertz as 16 megahertz. The open loop gain, that is where we have the maximum DC gain, or in other ways, where the corner frequency of the amplifier is, is specified up to 20 kilohertz. From the output specification, we can see that it cannot swing all the way to the supply voltage, but only from 14.1 to minus 14.6 volts. There are also some operational amplifiers they go rail to rail. That means they can go all the way to the maximum supply voltage that is supplied to the amplifier. Now, as we have seen when we looked into the specific diagrams behind these parameters, they vary greatly with the supply voltage that you're using, the test signal you're applying, the impedance that you're loading the operational amplifier with, the temperature, and very other test conditions around the amplifier. So the overview on the first page often also includes marketing sentences like excellent gain and phase margins that could actually be quantified. And also all of those numbers are in great competition with the numerous other devices that are on the market and therefore the manufacturers try to optimize the parameters as they are getting compared based on those key performance parameters. Now you have seen how to use the Laplace transformation and the gain phase diagrams, the transfer functions applied to amplifiers. And therefore you can exercise now using a SPICE simulator use the component op-amp and look at the gain phase diagram in a simulation. In the simulator, you can also apply the Fourier analysis and observe the components in the spectrum, look at the harmonic distortion at the output file and see how these change when you actually change the simulation parameters. Furthermore, you can try to simulate the crossover distortion by adding antiparallel diodes at the input. So one diode pointing one way and the other diode pointing the other way, for example, with a voltage drop of one volt and make sure you use a resistor to actually have some currents flowing through those diodes. There are several ways of modeling this. And it's all up to you how you want to model a nonlinear gain of the amplifier distorted with the one volts from the diode. Now using the method that you have developed above to look at the Fourier output of the simulation, you can compare those plots with the distorted plots. With another SPICE model called the Universal OpAmp2, you can actually attach supply rails, for example, plus minus 10 volt supply rails to an operational amplifier and configure it as an ideal buffer, which is also called a voltage follower. Furthermore, using the step function in SPICE, you can step the input voltage between 5 volts and 15 volts and see what happens when you drive the amplifier into clipping. Again, it might be very interesting to look at the Fourier results, which is in the output file of the simulation.
and the simulator also calculates the total harmonic distortion for you.